off this countdown, we have the Growler Bear. The Growler Bear, or the Pizzly Bear, is a cross between a Polar Bear and a Brown Grizzly Bear. This actually happened naturally in the wild, which is kind of hard to believe. Basically, because of climate change destroying the bear's habitats, they started breeding with each other out of desperation, which is actually pretty sad. It's believed that the first Growler Bear was discovered in 2006. On April 16th, 2006, a hunter named Jim Martell was out hunting when he captured a Growler Bear. At first, he thought it was just a polar bear, but officials took a look at it and noticed it had strange features. Later, it was determined to be a Growler Bear or Pizzly Bear. It's really funny, to, it's really funny to say. In our ninth spot, we have a Zorse. Any guesses as to what this animal is mixed with? Well, it's a mix between a zebra and a horse, or sometimes a donkey too. Other people refer to them as Zebula, or Zebrul, or a zebra mule. These animals were created after crossbreeding a male zebra with a female horse. The offspring look more like a horse than a zebra, but they still got the identifying stripes. The first Zorse was created during the 19th century by Charles Darwin. Now they are still around to this day, but they are extremely rare. This is because Zorses are infertile or sterile. They can't reproduce on their own. So the only way to get more of these bad boys is to get someone to crossbreed them themselves. Moving on to number eight, we have the Jag Lion or Jag Leon, I don't know. It's a kind of a weird name, not gonna lie, but this animal is a cross between a Jaguar and a lion. And these are actually naturally born. The first Jag Lion was unintentionally bred. It happened when a lion and a jaguar coexisted in the same zoo together. They were raised together and you know, one thing led to another and boom, baby jag lion. Not gonna lie, these things are beautifully terrifying. They are so unique and cool looking, but also I would never wanna come face to face with one. Now, let me share with you a quick little love story between a jaguar named Diablo and a lion named Lola. The two were raised side by side and were inseparable. When Lola got mature, they kept Diablo away from her so that they would never mate. But whenever they were apart, both animals would grow depressed. It got so bad to the point where Lola wouldn't even eat. So they brought them back together and bada bing bada boom, they had two babies together. So cute. Moving on to number seven, we have the human Z. It is so weird and uncomfortable putting this one on the list. But a human Z is a cross between a human and a chimpanzee. Yeah, I already know what you're thinking, but no, not that. Let me explain. Serious attempts have been made throughout the years to cross a chimp with a human. Since we're so similar in a genetic way, people believe that it's possible to do this. Ilya Ivanish Ivanov was the first person to attempt to create a human-chimp hybrid. I believe he started in 1918 and continued these experiences throughout the 1920s. During that time, the Soviet Union was also doing the same experiments. In 2019, rumor has it that a team of researchers from the Salk Institute from Biological Studies in the US successfully completed this. It's kind of creepy, I know. In our sixth spot, we have the Iron Age Pig. This is a big, mean old pig, literally. So the Iron Age Pig is a cross between a domestic pig and a wild boar. That's just like so wrong to me on so many levels. Like, poor little Miss Piggy. Now, look at this thing. It's huge and looks tough and mean. In fact, they are considered very hostile animals. It's because wild boars are typically more aggressive. That's one of the traits that gets passed along to their offsprings. Now they get their name because this pig has many characteristics of domesticated animals from the Iron Age period. Hello, there you go, Iron Age pig. It's quite fascinating. These pigs are generally bred in Europe for the sole purpose of selling and eating them. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with the green sea slug. As strange as this one is, it's actually really interesting. Honestly though, this has to be the weirdest hybrid on this list. And that's because it's part animal and part plant. Yeah, it's a mix between a sea slug and algae. Yeah, yeah, algae. This sea slug was going around eating algae and eventually the algae became part of its DNA. It's very strange. Soon green sea slugs were born and contained chlorophyll, just like a plant. In fact, this is the first animal able to make chlorophyll like a plant. They literally can turn solar energy into food. 
Again, it's quite weird, but also fascinating. In our fourth spot, we have the Wolfin, which is really fun and funny to say. So a Wolfin is a mix between an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. In fact, these are considered very, very rare. The first recorded Wolfin was born in 1981 in Tokyo SeaWorld, but sadly, he passed away after 200 days. Now, the first Wolfin born in the US was at Sea Life Park in Hawaii in 1985, but she had trouble reproducing. Her baby Wolfins sadly passed away. Some say they have seen Wolfins out in the wild, but these sightings have never been confirmed. But if you do see one, it's very rare. Coming in at number three, we have the Enviro Pig. Okay, this one, I take it back. This one is probably the weirdest one on this list. Basically, an Enviro Pig is an environmentally friendly pig. Basically, pig's excrements are high in phosphorus. This phosphorus then ends up in lakes and rivers and oceans and can cause a boom of algae. So scientists were like, hey, let's just breed a pig with less toxic waste. And that's what they did. Enviro pigs are pigs with up to 65% less phosphorus in their excrements. This pig was first created in 1999 at the University of Guelph's farm in Canada. This pig had its phytase gene attached to a piece of mouse DNA. Basically, in the end, it made the pig produce an enzyme to help it better digest plant phosphorus, which is a nutrient in its feed. Voila, from there, Enviro pigs were born. In our second spot, we have the Belgian super cow. Now, when they said super cow, they weren't joking, because take a load of this cow. It's monstrous. As many of you guys know, cows are my favorite animal, but this one terrifies me. It's massive, like look at its muscles. I'm sorry, but no animal should be as ripped as that. So basically this super cow was created back in the 1800s when Belgian scientists and farmers mixed native cattle with shorthorn cattle. Then over the time, they would select the biggest and strongest offsprings of each variety and get them to breed together. So on and so on, bam, you got this super cow, which is definitely the biggest and strongest. So maybe let's stop doing that because this cow is soon gonna get too big for its own good and like take over the world or something. And in our number one spot, we have the human pig hybrid. Yes, this is a real thing. Scientists at the Salk Institute for Biological Sciences in California have created a human-pig hybrid. Now you're probably wondering, why on earth would they do this? Well, they did this in hopes that one day they could grow human organs inside of pigs and other animals instead of waiting for a donor. So in 2017, an embryo was placed in an adult pig for four weeks. Then this was taken out and analyzed. And the embryo survived and contained some human cells. Now they're going to figure out if pig embryos can handle enough human cells to create human organs. It's very creepy in my opinion. Starting off this countdown, we have the Zubron. This is a cross between domestic cattle and the European bison. In fact, the European bison, AKA the Wizened, was once threatened by extinction, but now they were making a comeback. The Zubron were first created by Leopold Wallicki in 1847, but scientists didn't breed the first fertile Zubron until 1960. In fact, after World War I, a lot of people believed that the Zubron was going to replace domestic cattle because of their low susceptibility to disease and their durability. All throughout the 1950s and 60s, scientists were working on creating these creatures in labs. Over the course of 16 years, 71 Zubrons were born. Experiments continued to run on these animals until the late 1980s. That's when the experiments were shut down. One of the reasons being they were unsatisfied with the results, but also they were scared that the Zubron would crossbreed with the endangered wild wizent and then contaminate the whole gene pool. Now there's just one herd left and it's located in a national park. Moving on to number nine, we have the human rodent hybrid. And if you guys are liking this video so far, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. But you heard me correctly. It's a human rodent hybrid. A stem cell biologist from Tokyo has been trying to grow human cells in mice and rats and then transplant those embryos into surrogate animals. So his experiments start by injecting some cells into rat and mice embryos. But those rodents have been genetically manipulated so they can't make pancreases for themselves. His hope is that the rodents' bodies will use the human cells to then make a pancreas. Here's the thing though. 
while conducting the experiments, if they find that the rats are starting to develop a human type brain, then they have to stop the experiments on them. It's part of the agreement he has with the government. They don't want a humanized animal coming into existence. Still, we can say that there are some humanized rodents out there. Moving on to number eight, we have the Leopon. Lions, no tigers, but leopards, oh my. See what I did there? A leopon is a mix between a male leopard and a female lion. If you thought leopards or lions alone were scary, wait until you take a look at this bad boy. So the leopon literally looks like it's fake. It has the head of a lion, but the body of a leopard. They are beautiful, but imagine being hunted down by one of those. No, thank you. In fact, they can grow to be larger than their full grown leopard father. Also, they can last 20 years in the wild. On average, leopards live to be around 23 years old and lions only 13. So that's pretty impressive. The first reference to the leopon was made in the first century, but it wasn't until 1910 that someone saw one in real life and it was actually credible. But don't be fooled, leopards and lions aren't out there mating with each other. These animals were produced in captivity. They're very unlikely to occur naturally in the wild. In our seventh spot today, we have the Jeep or geep, I don't know how you pronounce it, but I'm not talking about the car here. This is a mixture between a goat and a sheep. It's pretty cute, not gonna lie. But breeding the two can be a very risky game. Very few babies are carried to term, and even fewer manage to survive birth. Those that do survive have a bunch of genetic abnormalities. But people still cross the two together, which is sad because chances are most of the time it'll have a negative outcome. Coming in at number six, we have the hybrid lions gone wrong. This is a sad example of breeding gone wrong. In 2006, nearly two dozen crossbred lions in Northern India were dying after they developed a mysterious disease. The disease was a result of inbreeding and a weakened gene pool. Nearly 80 lions were affected by this. The lions being born had weak hind legs and had difficulty walking and couldn't even run. They also had failing immune systems. Now, there's a wildlife law in India which prohibits the killing of animals. So basically, they just had to wait for these lions to die a slow, painful death on their own. It's a very tragic case of breeding gone wrong. Those poor lions. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the see-through frog. Scientists in Japan have managed to create a frog that has see-through skin, which is really freaking creepy if you ask me. So they created this frog by crossing two kinds of recessive color mutant frogs together. They did this through artificial insemination. And the offspring ended up producing frogs with translucent skin. Now there's a lot more to it than that, but that's just the simplified way to describe it. Now they actually have a good reason for doing this. Having frogs with visible organs means you don't need to dissect them for medical research. Instead, you can just observe by looking through them. So this reduces the need for dissecting and killing innocent frogs. In our fourth spot today, we have the glow-in-the-dark cats. No, I am not making this up. It is a real thing. Basically, these glow-in-the-dark cats were created in an attempt to stop HIV AIDS. So the virus responsible for HIV in humans is similar to the feline immunodeficiency virus, FIV. So what they did was insert a gene that produces a fluorescent protein called GFP. This is produced naturally in jellyfish, but it's what gives these kitties a green glow. Then they also inserted a gene that blocks the FIV virus into unfertilized eggs of the cat. When the cat gave birth to the kitties, if they glowed green, that meant they also had the anti-FIV gene. They hope that these experiments will one day lead to them finding a way to make humans resistant to HIV. In our third spot today, we have the infertile pink bullworm. In 2005, the pink bullworm was becoming a huge problem in cotton farming. These invasive pests lay eggs on cotton balls. And then once they hatch, the larvae eat the seeds and damage the cotton fibers. It was getting so bad that scientists came up with this really weird way to get rid of them. Basically, they created sterile pink bullworms. They did this by treating a bunch of moths with radiation. The radiation would damage their reproduction cells, but it wouldn't kill the insect. That way, when they encountered a normal pink bullworm and the two mated, bam! it would create an infertile pink bullworm. So for four years, two billion pink bullworm moths were released into Arizona's cotton fields. They literally would fly an airplane above the fields and then drop millions of these moths down onto the crops and 
thankfully it worked. Imagine if their plan didn't work, there would be billions more pink bullworms out there. It could have destroyed the crops completely. Even the scientists admitted that it was a very risky move. Coming in at number two, we have the killer bees. Did you know that killer bees were accidentally created by scientists? See, this kind of stuff scares me. Like what else have scientists created by accident? Basically in the 1950s, a biologist was commissioned by the Brazilian government to create a species of bees that would increase honey production. But along the way, things went wrong. The biologist himself didn't have much experience with animal breeding. In the end, bees from Southern Africa and local Brazilian honeybees made it and it produced these angry killer bees. And then of course, thousands of these killer bees accidentally escaped. Now they get their name because when pissed off, they have been known to chase people down for more than a quarter mile. And on top of that, their stings are very painful. So these bees were literally created in a lab by accident. And in our number one spot today, we have the rabbit man. For this one, we have a hybrid between a human and a rabbit. Again, I'm not making this up. The first successful experiment was done in 2003 in Shanghai. A team of scientists managed to fuse human cells with rabbit eggs. In the United States, scientists have been trying to do the same, but their attempts have been unsuccessful. But in Shanghai, they managed to pull this off. This experiment was done to see if it could be used to grow cells or tissues for transplant patients. But in the end, they only allowed the human rabbit to develop for a couple of days before they had to destroy it and then just harvest it for its stem cells. Either way, they still created a human rabbit hybrid. Mm -hmm. 